This past week, I posted this video asking if this is Harai or Suriage. And there seems to be a little bit of confusion. So let's get rid of that confusion today and focus today on Harai. Let me share with you some details to help you improve your Harai and break down some of the things like the motion, the timing, the tenouchi, and all of these things to help you have a more successful technique after your Harai. If you want to see a video dedicated on Suriage, let me know down in the comments. And if you haven't, please subscribe to the channel if you would like to know when I post new videos or when I go live so you can come watch Kendo with me and ask me all your questions. I remember at some point asking senseis how to do Suriage, how to do Harai, and I remember a lot of the times the way of doing it looks similar if not identical to me. And as a matter of fact, if we go to the official guide for Kendo instruction, the pictures there describing Suriage and Harai, they're almost identical. So breaking down the difference between Harai and Suriage, it's when to do the technique. Harai is shikake waza and suriage is oji waza. So put simply, with harai, you're making an opening, you're breaking the kamai of the opponent, and with suriage, you're deflecting an attack. Depending on the situation, the motions might look identical, might even be identical. But there's some things to keep in mind because one way the opponent is coming at you, you have to deflect the technique, the other one, you are making the open. The classic image for Harai is this knock of the sword done by leaving the center and coming back sharply to make an opening and have an opportunity to attack. This is one way of doing it, but there are more ways to knock the sword out of the way in order for you to have an open. Regardless of the motion that you do, let me give you some tips to help you improve your Harai and help you hopefully have a better opening against your opponent. The first thing is that your target is the center. Avoid over swinging the Shinai because you want to be in a good position to attack after you knock the Shinai out of the way, but also you don't want to be vulnerable to an attack if you happen to miss or if the opponent recovers in time. Especially do not pull and push your sword with your right hand. Use the left hand to start the motion, work with both hands and wrist to make a sharp movement. Use Tenouchi to be able to stop right after the knock and be in a good position to come in forward for your technique. Needless to say, you don't only use your hands for this, you also want to use your body to come in forward. The next tip I want to say is find the sweet spot of your opponent's shinai, which is the middle. If you aim for the tip of your opponent's shinai, two things could happen. One, high chance of you missing. The second, that your opponent will have enough time to react and take back the center before you have the ability to come in forward and get the technique. On the other side, if you aim too deep, it's gonna be really hard to move the shinai out of the way. You're gonna have a really bad distance in order to do an attack after, and it can also make you vulnerable to an attack from your opponent. The next step will be finding the sweet spot for your Shinai. You don't want to hit too deep with your own Shinai because one, it will mess with your distance. Two, with using the tip, you have a most efficient point of contact and it's easier to move to get a good motion with the tip, get good force and speed to knock the Shinai out of the way and get your opponent. Also, with the further distance away from your body, it will give your opponent less chances for them to hit you as you approach them. Next is the timing of execution. Towards the end of the video, I'm gonna tell you more about when is a good time or what type of opponent and situations is good for you to use Harai, but just know this, as you coming in and you do the Harai, you want to make sure that you continue the motion into the technique. Between the Harai and your technique, it should all be done in one fluid motion. After you get your opponent sword out of the way, you should be on your way to hitting, not just make the opening and then make the decision to go. You can use Harai to get the sword out of the way and gauge your opponent's reaction, but this is something else. If you do this, just keep in mind that it could give away your intention as well. Now, let me talk a little bit about the hands. Use both hands. Let me know if you want me to make a video dedicated on the motions of the hands and different motions that we can do with the sword. And by the way, if you're getting any value from this video, please take a second to hit the like button it really helps the channel grow and lets me know that you're enjoying these videos. The left hand should give you leverage and your right hand should be relaxed and follow the shinai along. Needless to say, the right hand should be very flexible. If you pull and push your shinai with your right arm, you will not have the control necessary to transition fluidly into your technique after the harai. Maybe you get a lot of power this way, but you don't need much. And if you happen to miss doing it this way, you will be very vulnerable. Which brings me to my last tip, your goal is the technique not the harai. Don't get caught fighting the shinai. You need to get it out of the way, but that's it. Your goal is to come in for the technique. Focus on your sword and your body to be in optimal position to attack, to hit right after the sword is being out of the way. Harai is used to break your opponent's kamai. And if we go by the book, literally, harai is most effective when the opponent is beginning to start a motion, beginning to start a technique, 
or going backwards. But I do suggest you to try in different situations to make it your own. Between harai and your technique, there has to be constant pressure. So if you would like to know more about that, you might want to check out this video I made about making opportunities to strike. If you have any questions or if you feel like I missed anything, leave it down in the comments below or you can join me in one of my live streams and ask your questions. Make sure that you're subscribed to the channel so you know when I go live or I post new videos. If you haven't already and you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and don't forget to share this with someone you want their candle to improve. Thank you very much for watching.